Asian Heritage Month is underway, and what better way to celebrate culture than over tasty food? Hosted by Food Trip and with the Asian Heritage Society of Manitoba, Taste of Asia on May 25th to 26th will be a delicious time. What can we expect? Why is Asian Heritage Month important? And what is the role of Asian Heritage Society of Manitoba? And what is the role of the Asian Heritage Society of Manitoba? We explore these questions on this episode of You Talk. Let's get into it. My name is uh, Fortunato Lin. I am currently president of Asian Heritage Society of Manitoba. I've been involved since 2005. And I've, you know, just really been privileged to have worked with so many great people that have really founded the Asian Heritage Society uh, f here in Manitoba. And so got to meet some really leaders in our community, like uh, Dr. Art Mickey, you know, Pamela Ribello. And so for me, like to be a president this year has really been an honor to kind of continue that legacy and now to kind of also try and recruit some young folks to get in into their role as well, as I was recruited when I was, I would say, younger. Yeah, I mean, it's it's so fulfilling to get involved in these different community organizations. That's something I've been really craving, that community connection mm -hmm. to things. And as I get older, it's like, well, you know what, maybe I should be getting yeah, yeah. out there yeah. and doing some things. Why is it that you want to get involved? You mentioned, you know, that slight recruiting, yeah. but yeah. what is it that you're like, yes, I want to invest my time and energy into this organization? I think for me, because, you know, we live in Canada and, you know, living in Winnipeg, it's you have such a diverse community. And for me at the time, too, I mean, at that age, I was really just starting to find myself when who I am as a person in this place. And so for me, that was a way for me to be able to understand others that may have shared the same values as I do, same beliefs, but also for me to learn from other people from different communities. And so that kind of has been a driver for me. And then throughout the years, and then, you know, in education, because I am an educator as well, uh, you know, learning about the truth about Indigenous people, that also has given me the drive to also continue that work uh, as kind of connecting Asian communities um, with the indigenous stories. And so that people, settlers on this land have understanding who the first people are, but also find ways to connect uh, with others. I was just talking to an indigenous leader today and she was mentioning that, you know, there's a lot of similarities between the indigenous and newcomer stories about mm -hmm. some of the struggles or discriminations that communities have faced over the years. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, that is the interesting thing, because when you, you hear people's stories, you kind of have those shared experiences. And for many, it's like, yeah, we're kind of in many ways, we're in, on this place. Um, kind of on different boats sometimes, but we we are experiencing the same things. And so there is definitely that idea of kind of relation uh, and things that people go through. And I think within that, people empathize and, and, you know, and they find the heart in that. And I think that's where people find connections. And it's also that like rebuilding community aspect, right? When newcomers are coming in, they're trying to rebuild something that they might have lost moving away from their home country. So like they're trying to like Chinese migrants uh, with Chinatown or the myriad of other uh, groups that come over to build their different shared communities. And for indigenous people, it's rebuilding there from colonization, settlement. So yeah, there's also that shared aspect of rebuilding. Yeah, there is. And even for Asian Canadians, you know, you look at the history of Asian Canadians, there's many, you know, ways that we were limited to what we can do. We couldn't vote, we couldn't do certain things. So I think the impact of that from the past, as, as you've seen, you know, with residential schools, obviously not to the extent that Indigenous uh, peoples have experienced what has been done to them in the past, but there's definitely a lot of those systems that were in place in the past that still now even affects people. Newcomers, settlers, uh, second generation Asians, and even now, you know, continue to impact Indigenous peoples as well. And I think that can be the power of multiculturalism, understanding kind of those shared stories and learning from the aspects that are different. Be like, well, whether it is reconciliation or building community, uplifting communities towards a better tomorrow. 
That's right. I agree. Asian Heritage Society, like Asian Canadians, that's a pretty wide umbrella that covers a lot of different communities. So when we're looking at the Asian Heritage Society, what sort of cultures and communities are all represented under that umbrella? Asia is is a big place. So here in Winnipeg, anyway, uh, here in Manitoba, we have uh, mainly a lot of our members, uh, I would say people that have been involved uh, as part of Asian Heritage Society of Manitoba, have folks from India, the Philippines, Chinese. We've had some, a lot more, I would say, like the Pacific Islands, Islanders, and um, kind of more in the Southeast Ocean. Although we are expanding and we are always open because we understand how big Asia is, but it's also a matter of how we're reaching out to communities that are not currently on our board or have been part of some of our celebrations. So, but we always are open to invitation. Also, we invite folks to do that as well. Let's get into the kind of the meat and potatoes of what your organization does. Because, you know, there's a ton of different smaller organizations like Philippine Heritage Council, things like that, um, uh, Chinese Cultural Center. Like there's all these different aspects and they cover a certain area within their communities. What sort of things does the Asian Heritage Society do? What is kind of your your mission and goal? Part of our mission is um, looking at kind of the education piece, you know, and ensuring we're providing spaces um, for people to understand our, our history here in Canada. So sharing our shared experiences, as we've talked about earlier. Um, also, we do a lot of really connecting communities together. So in in a lot of communities, they work in isolation. And so whereas we're trying to build a platform where then everybody can come together to share each other's culture and, and values. Right now, it is Asian Heritage Month. There's a lot of exciting things happening and more on the way. Fascination Film Festival That's is right. coming yeah. on. But, you know, there's also this uh, food festival uh, coming up. So there's a lot of different celebrations. Why don't you walk me through sort of the different things that have happened throughout May for Asian Heritage Month, what's on the way, and why is it important? First, we had our opening kind of at the legislature, at the legislative building. So to us, that was important um, because it's always important when we have the backing of um, of our government to acknowledge the fact that, you know, it is Asian Heritage Month. And so I think that is important. And the fact now that we have politicians um, that do represent the diverse community, most of the diversity here in Manitoba. And so to me, that, that was also really important for us to have uh, a space like that, to be welcome into that space and to do our opening as an opening act for Asian Heritage Month. Um, we had the cooking demonstration at the Japanese Cultural Center. That was a big hit. I mean, yeah, there's a ton of different events and activities. And, it, you know, it's it's always fun for even people with, not within the Asian community to go to learn, to connect as well. Really, the idea for the Asian Heritage Month is, you know, we provide different activities and projects, but the idea is that uh, other people are are coming along to also join in the celebration. And so one of the neat things that happened actually that we were invited uh, at Lafarge. Uh, it's a construction company, and they invited us to talk about Asian Canadians and the history. So we did that, which was a neat thing because this is uh, you know a construction company that uh, hires diverse people, and they thought it was important for us to come in and share about what we know about the history of Asian Canadians here in Canada. Um, but also share about our work we do as Asian Heritage. So that was really cool to see that because, again, the idea for Asian Heritage was for others to be able to do the work, not just we as a society, although we do a lot of things to ensure that we provide opportunities for people to learn about each other and to kind of build a closer relationship with each other. We have the also the... Um, we had had the comedy show, uh, I think Jay, uh, who was here last year to talk about the Food Trip Festival. Uh, he, This is his second uh, second annual comedy showcase, and that went really well as, as well. That was more for an older crowd. But again, the idea is that, you know, representation matters and in comedy representation matters. And so he's really trying to build up those representation here in, in Winnipeg and uh, try to pull people uh, together to, to laugh, to have fun. So that was that was a really neat program. We actually have a high school symposium coming up uh, on Thursday on the 23rd. 
that's at the Canadian Human Rights Museum. And that actually, we started that, I think, about 2005. So it's wow. been going on for so some time. So that's been around as as long as you've been involved. As long, yeah, because I was, I was kind of the first one where I, where I was working at Maple's Collegiate. We had the first one there at the high school. And then we ended up at University of Winnipeg. And now with um, CMHR, they kind of have really been sponsoring us and giving us the space to do that. So that involves really high schools um, in Winnipeg. And so most... In the past few years, it's been a lot of high schools from Seven Oaks. We have had Maples Collegiate, uh, Garden City Co- Collegiate. We've had uh, West Kelowna Collegiate. Uh, we've had some schools in Winnipeg School Division. Uh, this year, we actually were pretty diverse. We even have, I think I saw we have Neverville High School who's coming oh, in. very cool. So that was pretty cool to see because they're new. Uh, and I think there was another couple of schools from uh, Winnipeg School Division that we have not seen before that's looking to attend as well. So... What we hope is for that to grow, uh, again, because what we want the youth to know is that there is this space that, you know, people can come together to learn um, share those. Again, uh, the idea for the high school symposium also is we have a career panelist. And so Asians uh, that are in their career, in their career currently, and talking about the experience about, you know, what it's like, what it's like in their, in their career in their career of choice, but also to talk about their experiences uh, getting into their career and maybe what their experiences was as a high school student. Again, just kind of hoping that when they share these experiences that the high school students that are present in that symposium would be able to take something away. I think events like Asian Heritage Month, just in general, I think is so important because it it's representation. It showcases these communities that are growing here in Manitoba. And with the upcoming Filipino Heritage Month in June, I mean, the Filipino community is one of the fastest growing communities here in Manitoba. So it's just showing that how diverse Manitoba is becoming. Mm-hmm. And I think they say now Filipino is like the second language that's most spoken, right? That yeah, kind of, yeah, like Tagalog yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, Tagalog and so, yeah. That. And regarding the food trip, so the food trip is coming up also uh, on uh, not this weekend, but next weekend on the 25th and the 26th. That's a Saturday and Sunday. So there's going to be at the festival at the Forks, which we've been, I think the festival at the Forks has been going on since 2003. And it used to be at a smaller uh, stage. Uh, and so now we are kind of at the the big field, at the CN field there. And there's going to be food trucks uh, that's available. So the festival is called the Taste of Asia and Asian Heritage Society have partnered up with Food Trip. And so they're providing everything that uh, re- regards food and also providing all the tents. And so you'll find different activities that uh, families can can take part in. Uh, Asian Heritage will have a tent. And so people can come and learn about what we're all about and maybe do some cultural activities as well that we have planned. But from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m., we have uh, performances, uh, dances, songs, um, you name it, uh, martial arts even, that will be happening within that time. And so that that was our, our time slot was for 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. You will see a number of community performing and sharing their, their gifts and sharing their culture with us. Mm-hmm. And I mean, what better way to bring communities together than over food? Yeah, I think that's just central to any culture, right? Exactly. And I think in, in any gathering too. And the thing with that too is that you always find a connection with food. Like there's there's just something about it that just connects us. Because I mean, that is life, right? That's kind of what brings, that sustains our lives. One thing I've been noticing, like how many different cultures have like a dumpling slash noodle thing surrounding food. Like you have dumplings, you have uh, like pierogies and you like Ukrainian culture. Like everyone has their own little variety of kind of steamed or uh, boiled like uh, dumpling sort of thing. I think that is one of the, I think the best thing about living here in Winnipeg is we have, we are so diverse in that, you know, you have so much more choices with regards to food. So you'll certainly get a taste of that at, oh, exactly. on the 25th and the 26th. So. Well, it's been so much fun for myself exploring the vibrancy of food, like going uh, for Indian cuisine, never had it before. And I was like, wow, this is amazing, delicious. Um, 
One thing that I thought I would not love as much is sushi. Sushi has been driving me crazy. I just can't get enough of it recently. <laughs> no, sushi is definitely、uh, a thing. And like I said, when we had a cooking demonstration, I think we were limited to about 20, 30 people. And then we had over like 130 people register. And so we had to turn folks down. And then we had to increase the 30, I think, to 50 people we, we had. So, but that was a good indication for us to say, hey, this is something that people are interested in.、Mm-hmm. How can We provide more of that. So often that's kind of what we do as a society is that we take kind of feedback, but we also see what's working and what's not working. Like with the food trip and the festival at the Forks, the Taste of Asia, you know, it was, it's neat to see that you now have somebody like Food Trip who's taken over. So for us as a society, we feel like we did our job, right? Because, you know, we've provided a space where others can now take it on, although we're different because we're a nonprofit.、Um, But you know, regarding a, a business like that, that now feels comfortable and, and profitable that they can do something like this, right? For everybody. Yeah, it's providing those opportunities that you want to help start something up, like Fashion Asian Film Festival, starting off from just the small idea of like, hey, we want to showcase Asian films and look how big it is now. Like it's in two cities. I was actually, I got to see, I was, I, I indulged myself for the two days there with Fashion Asian last year and I was blown away. Like it was, it's amazing, you know, what Alan is doing there. And I, I kudos to him because I really feel that this is just going to take off from years now. And, you know, it's really neat. To again, to have space and representation in film、uh, and in media, and the ability for people to, to be able to showcase those things, but also for everyone to be able to be invited and to see that. So, I think the more space that we provide or create and sometimes demand,、uh, you know, it for me, it just it helps everybody out. And as we're continuing to build these events and increase awareness around the diversity here. Part of that involves getting people on those boards, volunteers to go out, bring awareness and help, and inc- meet all the different needs and mechanisms that are required to make all these different events possible.、Um, how do we get new blood and young people <laughs> yeah, yeah. into these spaces? Because、um, you can't always just rely on someone being like, Yes, I want to get involved. Like,、uh, you have to be actively fishing and looking. The recruiting that、yeah. came for yourself. So, what sort of efforts or things are you doing, or what are some things that you think you could be doing to help inspire and motivate young people、yeah. to? You know, get involved in the community. I think the high school symposium is a good avenue for us because we are hitting a lot of kids,、um, you know, and the target is high school students. You know, they are the ones entering into adulthood. And so, you know, we want them to know that there is a place for them where they can contribute to their community. One of the advantages I have is because I'm an educator. So, you know, I, I get a lot of my energy from the youth. And being connected with the youth. So, actually, in our current board, I was able to recruit a couple of younger folks that you know, that I've known. And actually, one used to be my student, and now he's a teacher. And so, he's, he's on our board member now,、uh, Jay Jimenez. And he's、uh, running actually this year. I kind of say, hey, you know, kind of open up the opportunity for him to run our high school symposium. And so, he's you know, doing the agenda for that and creating and contacting folks. So, I'm, I'm looking forward to that day.、Uh, we have another person, Darshadeep、uh, Campbell. Um, I knew his mom as a principal and I knew him as an educator as well, and kind of recruiting him. He's kind of, I think he's in his second year as a teacher. So he's still young and he's somebody that I know, you know, brings in a lot. For the main part, I think for us, it has been mainly a lot through what we know in our connections.、Um, but, you know, we, we do have、uh, contacts. Uh, general contact、uh, where people come to reach out for us and you know to say they want to get involved either as a volunteer. And so we try and always open those up、uh, and never kind of shut those doors on people. I think just the more like with the Fast Nation, and even that I know Alan does a great job of kind of recruiting volunteers as well and some younger volunteers. So I think that the idea is that when we connect、uh, with different communities, Is that people will, will gain interest. And so a lot of it is just the relationship and the connections that we, we develop over time, I feel. Yeah, it's, it's exciting to get young people in, see them, like to share those ideas of people who have been there for a while, crazy ideas that you're like, oh, I never thought about that. You know, let's give that a try. Like, what sort of newfangled technology or trends are going on that can help boost this up? I know that.、Uh, 
you know, our Instagram account is one thing that's uh, fairly active in our Facebook account. So I feel that is also social media is a big piece. And actually, that's how we were able to reach out with Prairie Asian organizations. And so that's a fairly youthful group that started their own organization. And so we've actually partnered up with them. And they're going to help us run a, a workshop uh, for our high school symposium on the 23rd. So part of the morning is high school students uh, be engaging in a workshop around model minority. And so that's something that they're going to be leading. So again, and it's, it's nice that you have this youth uh, organization that's on social media and, you know, we were able to connect with them. And so, again, I think, you know, means that, you know, there's social media is, is a nice connection for us to connect with others. So for someone who's attending these variety of events um, through Asian Heritage Month or throughout the remainder of the year and they want to get involved, whether that is a volunteer or or maybe in the future taking on more of that leadership role. Where can they go? Where where, where can they find out more information about Asian Heritage Society? Uh, they can definitely check out our website. We're on Instagram as well. Uh, we're on Facebook. So all the, if you just Google Asian Heritage Society of Manitoba, you'll probably get the first click on there. And then all of our contact info is on there as well. So... Uh, yeah, there's a few of us that kind of try to keep uh, on track of our emails and such. And so we try to get on top of that as soon as we can. But certainly that's a great way for folks to connect with us. And we've had a number of people that connected with us through that way as well. And just kind of close things off, what are you most excited about for Taste of Asia coming up next weekend? Lots of things. Are actually, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the barbecue stick for sure, the barbecue pork sticks for sure. Last year, actually, where the stage was kind of we were behind where they were cooking all the barbecue porks and uh, and you just get the woof <laughs> that smells the whole time. You're mm, like, oh, I delicious. gotta get some more. Yeah. So I think that's kind of what I'm looking forward to. It definitely is that. Um, but I know I'm looking forward to tasting some new things as well. So I'm pretty sure they're gonna have some new uh, new trucks uh, available, new food trucks available out there too. So I'm looking to see what's out there. Have any stories you'd like us to share or communities we should highlight? Leave a comment on our social media or reach out to us on our website. I'm Ryan Funk. This was You Talk. And have yourself a good one.